One of the things that students often struggle with in strength of materials is how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a composite section. And the composite section is one that's made up of individual boxes. It's not just a rectangle. So as an example, I've got a T section up here. This is just something uh, that's uh, representative. The top of the box, uh, top section of the box is 120 millimeters wide by 30 millimeters high. And the bottom section is 50 millimeters high by 30 millimeters wide. And there's a seam right there, the way I've got it drawn. We'll work on that later. Um, here's the definition for the location of the centroid. In order to calculate I, the area moment of inertia, the first thing we're going to need to know is the location of the centroid of this composite section. So I'm going to start here. Y bar represents the Y location of the centroid of the entire shape, and it's measured from that uh, axis as I've got shown there. So let's start by calculating all the things we need to know to figure out Y bar. Okay, A1 is just the area of box 1. That's 120 millimeters by 30 millimeters, and that equals 3,600 millimeters squared. A2 is going to be 30 millimeters by 50 millimeters, and that's 1,500 millimeters squared. Okay, so far, so good. Now, YI, that term right there, represents the distance from the centroids of the individual boxes to this uh, reference axis, and that's pretty straightforward. There's the centroid of box 2, centroid of box 1. Okay, well, if that's 50 millimeters, and that's half of 30, then Y1, which is the distance from here to there, is going to be 65 millimeters. That's 50 plus half of 30. And Y2 is a little easier. That's just the distance from the bottom of the shape to the centroid of box number 2. And that's 25 millimeters. Okay? No problem. All we've got to do now is plug those numbers into that expression. And that looks like this. 3,600 millimeters squared, because that's A1, times Y1, which is 65 millimeters, plus A2, which is 1,500, times Y2, which is 25, and divide that all by the sum of the two areas. And if you work all that out, you get 53.235 millimeters. I got that. Okay, now let's take a second and do a quick sniff test. Could this be the right answer? Whenever you get a number, if you've calculated, you ought to stand back and say, okay, could this be the right answer? Well, it makes sense that the centroid of the entire shape is going to be somewhere between the centroid of the lower box and the centroid of the upper box. So it has to be somewhere between uh, 25 and 65. We've just calculated the centroid to be right about there. Well, that definitely passes the sniff test. That could definitely be the right answer, and I believe it is. So now we can go on to calculating the area moment of inertia. I'm going to clear out some space here just because I've got a relatively small board to work on. We're going to need those areas, so uh, I'm going to keep those. Now the expression for area moment of inertia of the total uh, composite shape is this. It's the area moment of inertia of box number one plus this contribution that comes from the fact that box number one centroid does not lie on the centroid of the composite shape. And then I'm going to do the same thing for box number two. Now I've only got two expressions in brackets there because I've only got two boxes. If there are more boxes that make up the composite shape, there's going to be more of these. But it's just more of the same. So again, let's start by calculating all the components in that expression. We've got A1 and A2. So we've got that and we've got that. Let's try I1 now. I'm going to keep my screen from 
I'm uh, using my computer monitor over there to check my answers, and I want to make sure the screen doesn't go to sleep on me. So yeah, there's the expression for I1, 112 B1 H1 cubed, so 1 over 12, B1 is 120 millimeters, times H1, which is 30 millimeters cubed, and if you work that out, by the way, that's 10, and that's 1, that's going to be uh, 27,000, so we get 270,000 millimeters to the fourth. I2 is pretty much the same expression. All right, with slightly different numbers plugged into it. 112 times the base, which is 30 millimeters, times the height, which is 50 millimeters cubed. And again, we can make, we can make some cancellations. Let's see, 5 times 6 is 30, so I'll put a 5 there. 2 times 6 is 12, so I'll put a 2 there. And if you work that out, you get 312,500 millimeters to the fourth. So far, so good. The last thing that needs to be calculated is these d's, these distances right here. Okay. Those are the distances from the centroids of the individual boxes to centroid of the entire shape. D1 is going to be the distance from there to there. I don't know if you can see this here, but that's D1. All right, well, I know that the centroid location for the box is 65 millimeters, and the centroid of the entire shape is 53.235 millimeters, and that works out to 11. Point, I'll make sure I get this right, 765, I think. Yep. Probably should be able to do that in my head. Okay. Now, D can be either positive or negative. It doesn't matter because we're going to square it. Whatever uh, sign you start with, it's going to be positive at the end. This is the one place in your life, probably, that you can actually play fast and loose with uh, signs. You can arrange this calculation so both numbers are positive if that's what you want to do. No other place can you do this that I can think of. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Start with the centroid location for the entire shape and subtract out that 25 millimeters there. And I should get at the end of all this 28.235 millimeters. Okay, so now I've got I1, I2, D1, D2. Great. Every, I know everything I need to know now. Now, unfortunately, I'm kind of out of room. So what I'll do here is, uh, let's see, I'm going to erase this. Clear out some board, and I'm going to plug into that expression now. Okay, I1. 270,000 plus A1 times D1 squared. So that's 11.765 squared. And the second term now is 312,500. Oops, millimeters to the fourth, not squared plus 1,500 times d squared, d2 squared, which is now 28, squared. And if you work all that out, the first expression is 768270 millimeters to the fourth. And the second expression in brackets gives you 15083. And finally, just add those together. 2276. And there's your answer. So 2,276,600 millimeters to the fourth is the area moment of inertia of that composite shape.